I actually don't make a distinction between digital rights and analog rights. I believe that rights offline apply also online and vice versa. I think it's somewhat of a false distinction. But in the age of AI, I think it's very important to also consider not only human rights, but also the flip side, which is the rights of machines. Places like Estonia are beginning to um, consider rights for AIs, for example, being at the level of, of, of a pig or boar. The reason why I say that is because these challenges are occurring faster and faster. So it's a very good question. I would say that if there was one right, it would be the right to work online. And again, the reason why we have many problems is because, in my view, we have law and borders. And so we actually don't leverage the fact of the borderless nature of the internet. So take one uh, case which is very dear to my heart, which is uh, what we currently term uh, migrants or refugees, right? We only have two or three million. It's projected to be 20 million, maybe 200 million in a few years, given climate change. I think that, that there is enough space in cyberspace for everyone. And therefore, the right to work online, wherever you may be, uh, is going to be very important. Why? Because it's more just about rights. It's also about livelihood. Can you actually sustain yourself, be it for profit or non-profit? And the fundamental difference here is that the United Nations still has, by its very definition, a Westphalian view of nation states and nation state actors. Therefore, we have law and borders. Now, with blockchain and cryptographic technologies, we don't need um, legal certainty. We have a, a substitute, um, perhaps even complementary, which is cryptographic certainty, right? No one is above the law and no nation below mathematics. So we now have a new policy tool in this toolbox, but if we can say that, you know, regardless of where you are, I prefer to call these people nexpats, right? Netizen expatriates, right? So many of us travel the world with a, with a 20 kilogram um, little roll-on bag. We have our smartphone, we have, we have maybe one or more passports, legal identity, and we have one or more, and a smartphone with multi-currency accounts. So what separates that from someone who's an economic migrant? Well, it actually boils down to legal identity. And for, for these next patriots, it, that doesn't really matter. And I think increasingly it's not going to be mattering to, to solve the, the problems of climate change and the SDGs of the UN. It's going to require the whole world to cooperate at a scale that we've never seen before. The good news is that digital cooperation is easy, right? The iPhone is just barely 10 years old. Right? Bitcoin is only 10 years old. There are new tools in the policy toolbox. And at the IGF, what's interesting is that um, people who are involved at the very edge of technical development, um, for example, myself in, in, in the Bitcoin space, get to meet uh, people who are wearing the suits, who are the policy makers and leading uh, policy thinkers. And it's good to rub shoulders with these individuals um, who have their own viewpoints. I mean, I may disagree, but the whole point is not to agree or disagree. It's finding workable solutions that can work at scale.